Welcome back. We're ready now to work on our linear parabolic um, problems in three dimensions in scalar variables. What we did in the previous segment was set up the strong form of the problem. We'll just write it down very quickly now and uh, proceed on to the weak form and other things. All right? So we write start out here with the strong form. Right, and just remember we are still talking, we are back now to talking about scalar variables. Right, or scalar unknown really, let me call it that. Okay, so the setting. Uh, as before, involves our domain. We have our basis vectors E1, E2, E3. That is our domain of interest. It is omega. We point on it as x, with position vector x. And we have the setting of our Dirichlet boundary subset and the Neumann boundary subset. Okay, this is the setting. Uh, what we are saying is now given um, for data, right? We are given um, UG, JN, F. We have our, our, our old constitutive relation for these uh, problems in 3D as well, right? Which is that minus JI equals, sorry, plus Ji equals minus kappa Ij u comma j, right? These are all the data that we used when we did the steady state problem, right? We have in addition uh, another coefficient which I'm calling just rho, okay? And we made the point last time that this would be the specific heat per um, unit volume if we were doing the heat conduction problem. If we were doing uh, mass diffusion problems, rho would typically be 1. Okay? Given all of these data, what we want to do is uh, find u such that right, the following holds. Rho time derivative for the partial time derivative of u equals minus j i comma i plus f in omega the domain cross the time interval of interest okay for boundary conditions we have the same boundary, the same sort of boundary conditions that we encountered when we did the steady state problem, right? U equals UG on the Dirichlet boundary. And, um, right, minus JI NI equals J sub N, the influx heat, the heat influx or the mass influx on the Neumann boundary. Additionally, we made the point that we need initial conditions, right, or an initial condition here. We have only one initial condition because, uh, because of what? Do you, remember, do you recall? It's because our uh, problem has a single derivative in time, right? It's first order in time. Okay, so we need a single initial condition. And that is specified as u. Remember, u is in general a function of position and time, but now we set the time equal to zero. And we say that this is some given function, u naught, suggesting the initial 
value, right, of uh, u over the domain. Okay, so this is what we have, and uh, what we are uh, faced with in this um, segment is setting up the uh, the weak form. All right, we are going to take the approach for the weak form that we'd uh, taken before, which is uh, we. Um, we have the strong form, we multiply it by a weighting function and integrate over the domain, all right? So to get to the weak form, right? And remember, this is going to be the infinite dimensional weak form. In order to get to that, uh, we say the following, right? Consider W belonging to V, um, where V consists now of all functions such that W um, equals zero on partial of omega u, right? Our same old weighting function, all right? We consider this, right? Uh, and we essentially, we multiply and integrate, okay? And we'll do that on the next slide. Okay, so what we're doing is we multiply, so we say the following, right? We have w um, rho partial of u with respect to time equals minus w j i comma i plus w f right uh, so we multiply all of this and we integrate over the domain right so we integrate this over omega so here we pick up a d v all right and the same thing happens here we pick up a uh, integral over omega um, dv, and here too we pick up an integral, okay? That's what we have, right? Now, um, we proceed just as before, which is that uh, we integrate by parts, okay? From here, we integrate by parts, and just as we did in the case of the steady state problem, we integrate by parts only to have a different way to pose that um, divergence term, right? We want to transfer that divergence term into something else, we want to convert it into something else. And so we say, all right, we see it there and we're going to integrate by parts. Okay, now we are uh, acknowledged experts in this, so we don't need to go through all the steps. Let's just jump directly to the final form that we get on integration by parts, okay? And that is the following. It is that um, on the left-hand side now, we have integral over omega, w rho time derivative of u, partial time derivative of u, dv equals. Now, the way that integral works is, uh, the, the way integration by parts works here is to give us uh, two terms. Uh, one is integral over omega, w comma i, j i d v. I'll write the second volume term, which is uh, at this point just a bystander, and in fact, indeed, is a bystander through most of our, our, our the development of our formulation. And we have, of course, the boundary term, right? We get integral over partial omega uh, w j i n i. Right, and that's in, in, an integral over the surface, so we have ds. All right, so nothing happening with the time dependent term on the left hand side or the forcing function. Okay, and then of course we take the usual steps, which is to observe that uh, this term, right, is equal to integral over partial omega u w j i n i d s minus integral over partial omega j w j i n i 
ds, right? We have these two terms. And um, then we invoke our uh, boundary conditions, right, on the strong form, as well as our, uh, our homogeneous boundary condition on the weighting function, right? The, the, given the way we've defined the weighting function, the way we've always defined the weighting function, we know that w goes to 0 on the Dirichlet boundary. So that term drops out. And here we know that um, j i n i on the Neumann boundary is minus j n. All right. So making these substitutions, we arrive at integral over omega w rho partial time derivative of u dv equals integral over omega w comma i j i dv plus integral over omega w f dv um, plus integral over the Neumann boundary w j n ds, right? Now, um, let me do just one more thing and we'll have the final uh, weak form. I'm going to invoke the constitutive relation here, right? And we know that j i is minus kappa i j u comma j. So we invoke this and then also observing that we have a minus sign in front of it, I'm going to move it to the left-hand side, okay? All right. So what we have finally is the following. Integral over omega w rho partial time derivative of u dv plus integral over omega w comma i kappa i j u comma j dv equals integral over omega w f dv plus integral over the Neumann boundary w j n d s. Okay, this is everything we have, right? What, let, let me just write out now the finite dimensional weak form and then we'll be ready to go, right? Um, the finite dimensional weak form from here is obtained by just observing that uh, any attempts to solve the, the infinite dimensional weak form are not likely to be any more um, easy than uh, the strong form. So we decide to go to an approximate uh, representation of it. Right? And what this says is now find uh belonging to sh, right? Um, which is a subset of s, okay? And uh, what is sh? sh now is um, a collection of all functions of the type of uh, denoted uh which as before we will expect to come from h1 on omega, right? So the spatial dependence is going to be the same, right? Even in the time dependent problem, we are assuming that the kind of approximations we are going to construct will have the same uh, dependence that we know from, um, from before on the spatial uh, variable, okay? So we have this. Um, uh equals uh, ug on the Dirichlet boundary. Okay, so find uh given this. Now we, let's assume all the data, right? So we know everything about the data, right? Find uh belonging to sh uh, such that for all wh belonging to vh subset of v, right? 
where again Vh is also drawn from the space of H1 functions. Okay. Now, for all Wh belonging to Vh, the above uh, weak form should hold, except that every um, function that is obtained from either W or U is replaced with uh, the, um, the finite dimensional version of it, right? So we say that integral over omega Wh rho partial time derivative of u h d v equals integral over omega w h comma i kappa i j u h sorry comma j and I realize I got the sign brought, I brought an equality too early it's a little plus sign here d v equals integral over omega w h f d v plus integral over the Neumann boundary w h j n d s. Okay? This is our finite dimensional weak form for the, for the unsteady problem. Right? Um, now, let's just stare at this for a few minutes, right? Or maybe, maybe not that long, but for a few seconds at least, right? So now when we go through the whole process, what we expect is that just as before, right? We're going to do everything as before, right? Let's, uh, uh, we, we're, we're going to uh, now, uh, how do we go to these finite dimensional weak forms? Well, we are, remember that, that, that these are at this point, at this point, this problem is still finite dimensional only in space. We've done nothing about time, right? Because time is still, very much of a true derivative, right? That is, that is a time derivative. We haven't done sp anything special about approximating it yet, okay? So, as before, we will construct our finite dimensional basis by, by a partition of the domain, right? So, as usual, we will say partition omega um, equals union over E uh, of each of these omega soup E's, um, right? We have all that, right? Okay, and uh, the picture is, is, is also the same as before. If this is omega, uh, you know, let's suppose again, since we are in 3D, let us suppose that we are using our uh, hexahedral element subdomains and um, That is one of our elements, right? This is omega sup e. Okay? All of that is the same. 